Hey guys, welcome to lesson 109, corresponding parts and similar figures. So this starts on page 566, so find yourself there with your book, pencil, paper, and we will get ready to begin. So we'll start as always with our mental map. And um, yeah, let's get started. If you pause the video, please do. And we'll get started with letter A, 400 times 30. What is 400 times 30? Okay, the answer to that is 12,000. Letter B, 687 plus 250. What is 687 plus 250? The answer to that one is 937. Letter C, 10% of $20. What is 10% of $20? The answer is $2. Letter D, $10 minus $6.87. $10 minus $6.87. The answer to that is $3.13. $3.13. Letter E, 5 tenths or 0.5 times 100. What is 5 tenths times 100? The answer is 50. Letter F, what is 70 times 300? 70 times 300. The answer is 21,000. Letter G, how many cups are in a quart? How many cups are in a quart? All right, the answer to that is four cups. Four cups. Letter H, we're going to square seven plus one divided by two times three minus three divided by eight. Take the square root of that and you will get three. All right, good job on that mental math and let's get started. We're gonna do part one, which is corresponding parts. So what you see below are two triangles that are congruent. If you remember from the previous lesson, we learned that congruent meant that these figures are the same size and same shape. So they're basically the exact same triangle with different names. We have triangle ABC and triangle XYZ. So the angles and sides of triangle ABC correspond to the angles and sides of XYZ. They correspond. You'll also remember the term corresponding from when we did parallel lines with the transversal. So that will be a familiar term as well. So by rotating, translating, and reflecting triangle ABC, we could position it on top of triangle XYZ and their corresponding parts would be in the same place. So what we're gonna do for now is I'm just gonna sort of act like I've rotated and translated this triangle a by ABC by just redrawing it over here. So you wanna make sure the parts are in the same spot. So C is where our right angle is. A is the length on our shorter side, and B is the length on our longer side. So what you'll see here is that angle A corresponds to what angle here? So this angle is the same as what angle in the other figure? And the answer would be, oh, I did something wrong. That's okay. It would correspond to angle Y, okay? as we draw that around and as we figure that out. Um, next, angle B. What would angle B correspond to? It would correspond to angle X. They're in the same position in, in opposite triangles. Angle C would correspond to angle Z. And you can see right away that they're both the 90 degree angle, so they correspond. How about this one, length AB? So this line, AB. What line does that correspond with in our other triangle? It would correspond with this length. Uh, and I'm going to call it YX because A corresponds with Y. Um, BC, so this length here, corresponds to what other measure? BC would correspond to XZ. 
And then finally, AC. AC would correspond to YZ. They're in the same position. If I leave them on top of each other, they would directly correlate. And you'll also find that corresponding parts are congruent. So corresponding parts are going to be equal. They're going to be the same size, same shape. So those lines are going to have the same measure. Say, we, I told you they were five inches long. So if this was five inches long, this would be five inches long. If this was, uh, actually, let's do a different number. Let's say four inches. Let's say the hypotenuse, this longer edge, those would both be five, and this shorter edge was three. These would both be three, okay? Um, and one thing I want to point out to you, if you're following along in your book, you'll notice some of the letters are a little different in this example. That's just because I named my triangles a little differently, but it's okay. They still correspond. They're still equal, okay? So let's take a look at two different triangles. If I tell you that these two triangles are congruent, meaning they're the same size and same shape, what is the perimeter of each? All right, these two triangles are congruent, so what is the perimeter of each? So what you have to do is you have to rotate the triangle on the left, which unfortunately in this program I can't do that, so we're just going to have to redraw it and imagine it. So I'm rotating it, and in this case I've also translated it, so it's all the way over here. We know this short length is 3 inches and this long length is 4. So if these correspond, that means that this short length is 3 inches and that the longest length, the hypotenuse, is 5 inches. That means they have the same measure. And these are actually the same numbers that we just looked at in our previous triangles. So the question says, what is the perimeter of each? So you have to remember perimeter is the distance around. Okay, so 3 plus 4 plus 5 is going to be our perimeter, and that would be 12 inches. Okay, because these shapes are congruent, they will also have the same perimeter. So just remember, congruent parts or corresponding parts are just the parts if you were able to translate and rotate and uh, reflect these as you need to, the parts that would lay on top of each other if you were able to. So these are the same, these are the same, and these are the same. It also means the corresponding angles will be equal as well. Okay. Next, we're going to look at a different term. So this is part two of this lesson, similar figures. So similar figures have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. Okay? And so you can see that here. Triangles one and two are similar. And in this case, they are also congruent. So it's sort of like how a square can be a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. These two shapes can be similar, but they're not necessarily congruent. In this case, they're similar and congruent. So they're the same shape and the same size. So they're both. Okay. Um, triangle three, we'd say, is similar. Let's just group all of those together. It's similar. It's the same shape, but it's the wrong size. So that would just be a similar shape. And then look at triangle four. It is not similar because it is not the same size. They're not the same shape. You'll notice that the previous three triangles were all right triangles. As you can see, the right angle was drawn in there. This one doesn't have a right angle, so it's not similar. It's not the same shape. Okay? One thing that you need to know, um, actually, I'll tell you in a second. I'm getting ahead of myself because I like this lesson. Okay, we're going to look at example two. It says the two triangles below are similar. What is the measure of angle A? So I will label this triangle as it is in your book, ABC. This other triangle isn't labored, but labeled, but it does tell us the measures of these angles. So we've got 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. Remember all of the angles together of a triangle equal 180 degrees, and that's true here. So it says, if these two triangles are similar, what is the measure of angle A? So what we have to do is we have to rotate this triangle, and then we're also going to have to reflect it to get into the same position. So remember, rotating it, let's say we anchor it at the C, and we just rotate the shape upright. It would look like this. So this is A, this is B. The next thing we have to do is reflect it. So we're going to reflect it on this line, basically just bring the shape over here. And you don't always have to draw this out. This can be done mentally, as long as you know what part corresponds to what part. So now we see 
our triangle. Oh, I measured them. I labeled them both A. That's hilarious. That's actually not hilarious. That's bad. This is A. This is B. Okay, so what angle corresponds to angle A? Angle A corresponds to the 30 degree angle. So angle A equals 30 degrees. That's our example. So maybe you want to write a note that in similar figures, corresponding angles are equal. Corresponding angles are equal. If you don't want to write that down, that's okay. We're going to write down some notes in just a second. Okay. Basically what that means, if I kept these two angles the same, but extended the lengths of the triangle, let's do that. Let's extend the legs. You know, this is getting a little too messy for my taste. Why did it do that? So let's say I extended those legs. This new triangle that I've created is not the same shape. Oh man, I can't talk. It's not the same size, but it is the same shape, so it is similar. So this would still be 30 degrees, and this would still be 60 degrees. So that's a similar figure. It is the same shape. It is a different size. Hopefully I messed that up enough, but you guys will actually remember. So here are some notes that you really should write. The corresponding angles are congruent. Remember that's like saying equal. Congruent is same size and shape. And then look at the second note. The corresponding sides are proportional. Remember proportional is when we have two ratios or two fractions set equal to each other. So let's look at an example here where we're gonna learn, we're gonna use that fact number two to help us out. So the two triangles below are similar. So we have triangle A or rectangle. Yikes, this is a mess. Rectangle A, B, C, D. We also have rectangle E, F, G, H. What is the ratio of corresponding sides? Okay, so it tells us some of the lengths here. What is the ratio of corresponding sides? But what by what scale factor is rectangle A, B, C, D larger than rectangle E, F, G, H? So let's correspond to some of these sides. Let's say side BC corresponds to side FG. So we'll say 4 is to 2 as 2 is to 1. Now, maybe I went too fast there. Let's say BC corresponds to FG. So length of BC to length of FG is going to equal the ratio of these other two sides, so AB to EF. So AB to EF. So what we can do is we could prove that this ratio were proportional by reducing this 4 over 2 equals 2 over 1. So it's a true proportion. Proportions need to make sense. And then how much larger is rectangle ABCD? than EFGH. How much larger is it? So look at for each of these. So to get from 4 to this length and to get from 2 to this length, or alternately to get from here to here, what's that scale factor? You'll notice that to get from 2 to 4 and to get from 1 to 2, you have to multiply by 2. So we would say that rectangle ABCD is 2 times larger than rectangle EFGH. So it's larger by a scale factor of two. Larger by a scale factor of two. Okay? So just make sure you see what parts correspond to one another. Let's carry on. We're gonna do the practice set. Take a few moments, work on that practice set, and then we are gonna go over it. So for letter A, it says all squares are similar. Is that true or false? Now, we always have to be careful when you, when you hear a word like all, anything that's absolute. So let's take a square that is four units by four units, and then take a square that's 
one, two, three, four, five, six, six units by six units, just to do an example. So similar means same size, oh, I always mess this up, same shape, different size. So are all squares the same shape? Yes, they're all squares. Are they all different sizes? Yeah, most of the time, unless you have two that are the same size. So are they similar? Yes, that is true. They're all the same shape, but they're all different sizes. All similar triangles are congruent. Is that true? Are all similar triangles? So does that mean if they're all the same shape, are they all the same size as well? No, that's false, because let's look here. We could have a right triangle that is three, four, five. We could have a very similar right triangle that's proportional, but that's six, eight, ten. Okay, they're, they're not the same size, they're just the same shape. So the second one is going to be false. Not all similar triangles are congruent. Letter C. All, um, if two polygons are similar, then their corresponding angles are equal in measure. Is that true? Let's take these triangle examples. So these two triangles are similar. Does that mean that this angle here is going to equal this angle here? Will this angle here equal this angle here? The answer to that is true. Okay, that's one of those rules we wrote down. We actually had the opportunity to write it down twice. The corresponding angles of similar polygons are congruent. Remember, congruent means equal. Same size, same shape. All right, letter D. These two triangles are congruent. Which side of triangle PQR is the same length as side AB? So you'll have to mentally sort of rotate, translate, reflect triangle PQR to see what part corresponds to AB, what part would overlay AB. And the answer is line QR, or if you wanted to write it, RQ. So that's the side that corresponds to AB. All right, letter E, which of these true triangles appear to be similar? Which ones appear to be the same shape? That would be triangle one and triangle two. You'll notice that triangle uh, three, it doesn't look necessarily the same. It's got sort of like steeper angles there. So that's not similar. Triangle F, these two pentagons are similar. That means we know right away they are the same shape, but not the same size. The scale factor for corresponding sides is three. So if we go from the smaller shape to the larger, it means we're gonna multiply those sides by three to get the side of the long, longer triangle or pentagon. How long is segment AE? Okay, so segment AE is on that smaller pentagon and it corresponds to length FJ on the larger. So if the scale factor is by three, we're gonna take that larger length, nine inches that they give us, and we're gonna divide by three to get the smaller length. So length AE, would equal three inches. How long is segment IJ? So IJ you'll see corresponds to length DE in the smaller pentagon. So if we're going from the smaller to the larger pentagon, we're gonna multiply by three. So multiply length DE by three and you would get, once again, three inches. Okay, I hope you guys liked that lesson about similar triangles, similar figures, as well as corresponding parts of congruent figures. So just remember the two main points, the corresponding angles of similar polygons are congruent and the corresponding sides of similar polygons are proportional. So that's gonna help you. And I hope you guys liked that lesson. If you need any further help, please let me know. And then also your homework is listed in the description box.